Hey, it's Peter Vogan. Welcome to the YEL 3.0 podcast. I'm excited about this episode because it's super relevant to what's happening right now. And I think it's something that you guys can take action on right away. And I also have a surprise for you that I want you to be the first to know that I've been working on a very long time. So I was talking to Patrick Bet David a while back, and we talked about the importance of going from six to seven figures and how six figures in 2022, 2023, 2024 is not going to be much in this new economy with where uh, inflation's going, with where wealth is going, with how much things cost. And it's important to understand no matter where you're from, I'm from a super small town on the Oregon coast of 6,000 people. I never actually thought I was going to be um, a multimillionaire. I was actually doubtful that I was going to make six figures, but something shifted along the way. So I want you to realize everyone is, it has the potential and everyone has the capabilities and the resources and the ability to make seven figures if they understand some of these important and powerful tactics and truths I'm going to share with you. Um, I wanted to share with you, I thought back the past 10 or 15 years. And it took me a long time to get the seven figures. Uh, it took me a long time to get the six figures. And I kept banging my head against the wall trying to figure everything out on my own. But I realized looking back that there's really three perspective shifts that I had to make in order to get past the seven figure hurdle. And once I understood these, once I realized these, once my mentor shared these, a whole new world opened up. And I think this is relevant right now because the people who really uh, stay focused and who really look for opportunity and replace fear with curiosity and confidence and certainty are going to be the ones that really capitalize the next year or two. So the first perspective shift that I had to realize, and I went through these the hard way, was you can't get to seven figures doing more of what got you six figures. It's a whole different mentality, a different way of thinking, a different set of rules, and it's a different approach to business. So you won't get there by just working more hours and doing more of what got you six figures. You must shift from being productive to CEO and entrepreneur productivity. Let me kind of explain what that is. It's not about getting as much done as possible, as fast as possible. And here's what I learned. When I started reaching out to seven and eight figure earners, when I started getting mentored by millionaires, I realized a lot of them were calm, cool, collected. They weren't like chickens with their heads cut off like I was trying to get the six figures and trying to go from six to seven. So a lot of times you'll see people working 60, 70, 80, 90 hours a week, um, just kind of turning their wheels and they're actually not at the seven figure mark. The seven figure mark doesn't require a ton more hours. It requires a different strategy and a different way of thinking. So productivity is, is more than just results and getting things done. It's about creating freedom to be with your family, to do what you want, and to have 100% control over your business and over your future. And productivity, and I had to learn the hard way, isn't about doing more faster. It's about doing the right things deliberately and with intention. Feeling the need to be busy all the time is a trauma response and a fear-based distraction from what you've been forced to acknowledge if you actually slowed down and thought things through. That was a big shift for me. It's a fear and trauma-based response. You don't have to be busy being busy. So my, defini my definition of productivity now is the use of your time, energy, intelligence, and resources in a manner calculated to move you closer to meaningful goals. So much of what I thought productivity meant had been proven wrong when I started connecting with seven-figure earners. And sometimes the best way to learn a new idea is to first unlearn the old idea. So you must unlearn the old idea, right? Here are some of the biggest perspective shifts that I've had to make, and these must be understood before shooting for that seven-figure mark. It's not about the hours you work. It's the work you put in the hours. And if you go by society's rules, you end up like society and most people aren't living the lives they, they're destined to live or want to live or envision they would live when they were younger. So when I first got into business and sales up in Seattle, Washington, I was working 40, 50 hours a week and I wasn't getting results. So 
I said, what do I do? I asked society. I asked people around me. I asked friends. I asked family. I said, what do you do? I'm not getting results. And all of them said the same thing. Work harder, work more. So I went to 60 hours. Then I went to 70. Then I went to 80. And I physically could not work any more hours. And I still wasn't getting the results. And then, of course, I, I started to figure out it's not about the hours worked, but what I'm putting in the hours. And it's not about working harder or smarter anymore. It's about working right. And working right is based on what your goals are, your strengths are, your industry is. Being productive doesn't mean getting everything done. There are people busier than you with more results, more peace of mind, and less stress. And focus is more important than intelligence. And focus is ultimately, ultimately a matter of simplicity and decision, right? So the first thing is understanding. You're not going to get the seven figures just doing more of what got you six. It's a new set of rules. You got to think different. Second thing that I had to learn that was a game changer was you have to go from self-developer to people developer. So it's important to master the what and the why. So you have to master the what and the why and then find the best for how. So what do I mean by that? Great leaders, great CEOs, they, they master what they're doing. They master what the movement is. They master what the business represents, what the culture looks like. They know why, okay? They know why they do what they do. They know why their business and their movement they're creating is important and the impact it makes. And they know why the vision is important. And here's the kicker. And they know how to get things done by hiring the best. They find people who can supplement their weak spots by putting out great goals, compelling visions, creating movements that people want to be a part of. So this is very important. It shifted for me. So instead of thinking, God, how do I do this? Or how am I going to learn this? I think who can do this better than me? Who loves, who is an expert at the things that I'm not good at? Who loves these weaknesses of mine? Like I love my strengths. And that's a total game changer. So it's important to fire yourself so you're not in all the day-to-day -day operations. So you're not working in the business, but you're working on the business. Very important. So good leaders, okay, they master the what and the why, and they find the best for who. I dive deeper um, in my book, Seven Rules to Seven Figures, which I have a surprise for you guys. It's finally here. I'm excited to share it in a second. Um, but I talk about these in my book, Seven Rules, Seven Figures. Number three, they protect their circle of influence at the highest level. They really understand the power of elevating who they're around. You're either hanging out with people who hold you accountable or who let you off the hook. And in this, I actually give you my exact blueprint to where you actually have a script on how to reach out to high level people and how to get a hold of anybody. But you'll realize that People that are at the seven-figure mark, the ones that I respect that have a world-class lifestyle, they're principle and standards-based because behind every principle and standard is a promise. Behind every feeling or mood is nothing. So a lot of six-figure earners, at least I was, I was feeling-based, mood-based, emotion-based. They don't waste their willpower and they focus on lifestyle shifts versus discipline. Life, shifting their lifestyle versus discipline. I'll never forget. Let me kind of paint this picture home. I was interviewing Ariana Huffington, the founder of Huffington Post, and she was struggling to build. She had a daughter that she was trying to raise. She was stressed out. She was discouraged. She was frustrated. And she actually went into exhaustion. She went to the hospital because she was sleep deprived and she was doing everything herself. So in this interview, I said, what changed? She said, well, I ended up uh, figuring certain perspectives out. I ended up building one of the most powerful brands. And now obviously Huffington Post is crushing it. She's worth 50 million. She's one of Forbes most powerful females. And simplifying what she said, which has to do with protecting your circle of influence, but also standing guard at the door of your mind and not being persuaded and influenced as much. She said, I simply realized I was making every decision in my business when I was frustrated, tired, 
hungry, lonely. And I was making those decisions and they were almost always wrong. She said, I remember the moment I made a decision. I'm just never going to make a decision for my business unless I'm in a peak state of mind. So protect your circle and elevate your emotional intelligence. So from this moment forward, just don't make a decision for your business unless you're in a peak state of mind. Because we all make, when we first wake up, sometimes we'll make coward decisions. We're not cowards, of course. You're not a coward, but people make coward decisions because they're super tired. So simply do not make decisions unless you're in a peak state of mind. If you can do those three things, if you can understand, it's not about the hours you work, but what you put in the hours. It's not about doing everything yourself, but finding the best people for, for the job. And if you can shift from emotions to standards and intelligence and base every decision off intelligence versus emotion and protect your inner circle at the highest level, you're giving yourself the best chance to get the seven figures. And there's a lot more lessons and breakthroughs that I want to share in, in my book, but here's what's exciting. The audio book just released where I go a lot deeper in these points and a bunch of other points. I talk about the seven rules of seven figures. This is the entrepreneur's playbook to freedom, family, and fortune. And I'm super excited to share with you. The audio book is, is live. I read it myself. So for you guys wanting the ultimate competitive advantage, I, I laid out the game plan and I'm excited for you to experience this. I leave each chapter with an execution plan you can follow as well. So in this audiobook, I lay out the unwritten rules of truly building a business on your term, one that allows you a lifestyle you're proud of and, and one that you're inspired by, one that allows you fulfillment and freedom, and one that helps you create some generational wealth for your family without sacrificing your most important values. I've simplified everything into a blueprint and a playbook that you can follow. And I'm very humbled. Someone that changed my life growing up when I was 18, my mom got me the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And Robert Kiyosaki totally shifted my perspective. Remember, one or two perspective shifts could yield you an extra $500,000 for the year. One new action plan, one new execution plan could yield you an extra 100K per month. So his perspective put me on a different trajectory towards life. And I've interviewed him three times now. Uh, we, we've connected multiple times and he actually gave me a quote for my book, which I get chills. It's still surreal. Um, I get, it's uh, promoted by Forbes, Entrepreneur Magazine, Patrick Bet David, Grant Cardone, and many others as well. So the audiobook is live at sevenrulesaudio.com. We'll link it below. I really do feel like I've hacked the system. I took a lot of trial and error. I invested over $300,000 into myself and continuously failed. But through that, I created a blueprint to truly live a life on my terms while growing a wildly successful business that runs itself. Obviously, I'm still involved, but I, I really feel like I've hacked the system. And now my focus is helping you build. Imagine having complete clarity in who you are and what you stand for. Imagine having the complete playbook of how to grow a thriving business in a new economy, one that's relevant and one that's aligned with your greatest strengths. Imagine experiencing peace of mind, fulfillment, and happiness each day versus stress and burnout like Ariana was experiencing while she was building. Imagine having the secret scripts that can help you get a hold of anybody you want and elevate your network. Imagine never having a financial issue ever again and working because you want to, not because you have to. Imagine attracting the highest paying clients to you versus you having to chase people. Imagine knowing you have the secret sauce, you have an unfair advantage, and you have so much confidence because you now have a roadmap very few people have. Now you do. The audiobook is live. I'm super excited to get your feedback. Once again, I read it myself. I spiced it up. I added content. I hope you feel my passion. Let me know what you think. Sevenrulesaudio.com. And I'm looking forward to getting your feedback. And we'll see you on the next episode. Hope you got some value. Thanks, guys.